about uh, creating graphs and tables from an equation. In this first example, I have an equation y equals 2 thirds x plus 1, and we're going to make a table of, out of it. So the first thing I would do is I would start, because it's my favorite thing to do, I'm going to pick the y-intercept, and I'm going to put it on my table as my first ordered pair. Now, this is not the only way to do it. This is one way to do it. So that order pair is 0, 1. Next, I'm going to look at the change in y, because remember, our slope is change in y over change in x. That means that I'm going to be changing by 2. I'm going to be going up by 2, which makes the next number 3. Then I'm going to go up by 2 again, which makes the next number 5. Then I'm going to go up by 2 again, it makes the next number 7, and then up by 2 again, and that makes the next number 9. Now, if you're wondering why it's up by 2, that's because this is a positive 2. It is not a negative 2. Next, I'm going to be looking at the change in x, which is also a positive 3. That means I'm going to be going up 3. So 0 plus 3 is 3. Then I'm going to add 3 again, which is 6. Then I'm going to add 3 again, which is 9. And then I'm going to add 3 again, which is 12. Now, this may look a little bit messy, but let's kind of line things up here. The first ordered pair is 0, 1. The second ordered pair is 3, 3. Next, I have 6, 5, 9, 7, and 12, 9. What does this look like on a graph? Now I have a graph here that it says I can uh, graph this equation. Um, first, I'm going to start with, again, my y-intercept. So with that y-intercept, remember this is my y-line, so I'm going to put a dot right there on y equals 1. Then I'm going to do my change in y. Change in y is, another way of saying it, is rise. So from here, I'm going to rise 1, 2. Then I'm going to do my change in x. It's also positive, but it's run, so change in x is going to go 1, 2, 3. So my ordered pair would go to right here. Now, this time I'm not going to put all the dots, but I'm just going to go up 1, 2, and then up 1, 2, 3. Okay, now I've got these three here that are in a line, but I need to go the opposite direction too. I've got to continue on my line. So since I went up 2, and right 3. Now I'm going to go down 2 and left 3. And that makes a point. And then down 2 and left 3. And if you notice that that makes a line. So let me get a line in here. Let's see. It's going to do a little trickery here. And now I'm going to go from this dot and all the way to this dot. Notice how it crosses through my y-intercept. I've got arrows both ends. I've got my ordered pairs. Okay, so one thing I want to do is I want to look back at the ordered pairs that we had over here. 0, 1, 3, 3, 6, 5. Let's go over to our graph and see if they're there. 0, 1 is right here. Let me change this so it's actually a pin, okay? 3, 3 was the second order pair. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Hey, there it is. The next ordered pair that we said was 6, 5. So over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So those three ordered pairs are on the graph. Now the other two ordered pairs, uh, if you notice that they were bigger than 9, 7, and 12, 9, so they didn't fit on my graph. Hey, let's look at this problem right here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my y-intercept again. So right here, I have negative 3, so that means my ordered pair is 0, negative 3. Next step I'm going to do is I have this negative sitting out front here. I'm going to put it with the 1. Now you can put it with the 4, but I always like to stick it with my top one. Once I do that, I'm just going to cross it out here. I'm not going to have a double negative. I just, I moved the negative to go with the top number. Now that tells me that my y's are changing by negative 1. So from right here, I'm going to go down 1, 
which makes me go to negative four. Then I'm gonna go down, which makes negative five. Then I'm gonna go down one, negative six, and down one, negative seven. Next, I'm gonna look at my y-intercept right here. Okay, and that is, since it's a positive four, I'm gonna go plus four, which is gonna be four, plus four again, which is eight, plus four again, which is 12, and plus four again, which is 16. Now I'm gonna kind of line these up. It's zero, negative three, four, negative four, eight, negative five, 12, negative six, 16, negative seven. Let's look at a graph of this. So on my graph, I start with my y-intercept, which is negative three. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna go down one, two, three. Okay, so there is my y-intercept. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Okay, next I'm going to do my slope with the change in y. Now, I moved that negative up top. I'm gonna to cross it out there. I have a negative one. So I'm gonna go down one. The bottom number is a four, but what kind of a four is it? It is a positive four. Now I like to write it there because that reminds me that I'm going in the positive direction four. So I already went down one, now I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. So that's where my dot is going to end up, right there. Now, I've already gone as far as I can go on this graph. Actually, I could probably bring it up a little bit. There I go. I've gone down, so um, I can't go down one over four again. Well, I guess I could. Down one over one, two, three, four. It's a roundabout there, but now I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna go up one, and then I'm gonna go left four. And then I'm gonna go up one, and it's about there, and four. Okay, so now I have this ordered pair and this ordered pair. So let's draw a line. Okay, I just wanna make sure I've got my arrows on here. And now I'm gonna go like so. And it's not perfect, but it is pretty dang close. Okay, so right there is my line. Let's check some of our ordered pairs. So I'm gonna go back and uh, I'm gonna pick the ordered pairs that I know will fit on the graph. So I have zero, negative three, and four, negative four. Those are the only two that will fit on my graph. So I, let's see, I'm gonna write them up here. So I have zero, negative three, and four, negative four. Let's just check and see if they are on the graph. Okay, so here we go, zero, down one, two, three. So there's zero, negative three. Now let's do four, four. One, two, three, four, and then negative four. One, two, three, four. And that one is on the graph. So we did a good job. Congratulations. Now I showed you how to do the table where you were using your change in Y and you're using your change in X. There's another way to do it and we're going to use that on the next problem. Okay, first I want you to know, you can do this, this is a level three, it's really not much different than level one, but you can do it the way we're doing. The first thing we have to think about is how do I make my slope a fraction? Well, I put it over one. Okay, so when you do that, you still have your zero, negative four, then you would go down two on your Y side, you would go up one on your other side. But I wanna show you a different way because guess what? There are more than one ways to do uh, math problems. So I'm gonna erase this. This is another way and it's called using your calculator. Okay, so when I use my calculator, what I could do is I could just pick any numbers that I want for X. So I'm just gonna choose, how about negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Why did I pick those numbers? Uh, mainly because I know that they are going to fit on my graph over here. They're going to um, be, oh crap, let's see what I just did. There we go. They're gonna fit in the area that I need it to fit in. Okay, so I'm going to go like this, and now I'm gonna show you what would you type in your calculator, because this is all about just plugging numbers in. I would say negative two, times, and I'm gonna choose that first negative two right there, 
negative 2 plus 4. Well, a negative 2 times a negative 2 is 4, plus 4 is 8. Okay, then I'm going to choose negative 1. So let's see if I can do this. I'm going to change this now to a negative 1. Well, negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6. So let's come over here and put a 6. Next up, I'm going to put in a 0. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. Okay, next, I'm going to plug in a 1. So there's my 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 4 is 2. Hopefully now you're, I mean, you probably saw it a while back, but I just want to, uh, you know, make sure that you understand that you can just type these in your calculator too. But maybe by now you're noticing a pattern, okay? And I'm going to use the same colors I was using a while ago, but right here, what's my pattern? It's going down two every time. Huh, do you see that number right here? What is it over? It's over one. Well, what's my pattern right here? Oh, yeah, it's going up one every time. That would be my up one of my fraction. I wonder if we can find the y-intercept anywhere. Hey, look, there it is. So just another way of doing the same problem. So I did a lot of writing there, so let me kind of get rid of some of these things that I marked it up with. And I want us to see if we can fill in the rest of the pattern. You get to hear that a lot when I'm doing this. Okay, so the, the bottom part of the pattern is right here. Uh, I went 8, 6, 4, 2, and then it would be 0. So let's graph it now. When I graph it, I'm going to, I like to start with my y-intercept, which is the 4 right here. Okay, so I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and I put a dot. My slope is negative 2. I have to make it a fraction, so it's over 1. So rise negative 2, that means I'm going to go down 2, and then this is a positive 1, so I would go over 1. Then I go down 2 over 1, then I go down 2 over 1, and I'm going to basically fill up the graph, down 2 over 1. I kind of ran out of room, so I'm not going to do it, but then I'm going to go backwards, up 2, backwards 1. See how it fills in the line there? So let's go ahead and make a line. Um, go away. There we go. Okay. We get an extra random line there, but here is our line that goes right through the y-intercept, and then it has a slope of down 2 over 1. Let's look at this one right here. Okay, we're going to choose, and I'm going to use the same method I did on the last one, not because of any particular reason, just because I want to do it because I haven't done more than one problem that way. We're going to choose a number for x. So how about negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I like those numbers. I know they fit on the graph. So if I plug in negative 2 for x, huh, that means y is negative 2. If I plug in negative 1 for x, well, that means that one's negative 1. Are you seeing a pattern? This is saying that y is equal to x. Hey, 0, 1, Two, what does this look like on a graph? Well, I can fill in, let me get my eraser going here. I can fill in the numbers that I need on my equation. First, what would my slope be? It's going to be 1, because anytime you don't have a number in front of x, it's 1. So 1 over 1. But there's no y-intercept out here. So if there's nothing written, that means it would be plus 0. So my y-intercept is 0. And then I'm going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Do you see a pattern yet? It would go backwards and down. Okay, and I would continue on. And once you get enough of it, you can see where the line is going. So let's go ahead and draw that line in there. I'm going to put my arrows on it. Oh, maybe it's catching up with me. I don't need to. but. Uh, right here is my line. 
Let's check those ordered pairs. I didn't check them on the last one, but we probably need to check them on this one. One ordered pair is negative two, two. So let's see. One, two, one, two. Yep, that one's on there. Negative one, negative one. Okay, so negative one, negative one. That one's on here, so I had negative two, two. Then it looks like the third order pair is zero, zero. Then I have one, one, and two, two. Man, nailed it. Nice job. Okay, one more. This one says y equals four. So when we look at this, some of you may remember we've done some problems like this in the class, but all it says is y equals four. Well, what does that mean? That means that first, I know that this doesn't have an x next to it, so that must be my y-intercept. So I know I have an ordered pair of zero, four. What would my other ordered pairs be? Huh, well, I don't have a slope there. So four, if I didn't have a slope, that must mean it was zero x. So that means that this is going to increase by zero. Well, if four plus zero is four, plus zero is four, plus zero is four. Well, that's kind of strange. Are you seeing anything that maybe looks familiar? Hey, y is equal to four. Guess what? It doesn't matter what x is, because y is equal to four. Let's find y equals four. On my y line, I'm gonna go up to one, two, three, four. It is right here. So I have the ordered pair zero, four. Let's try one, four. Let's try two, four, and three, four, and four, four, and five, four. Okay, so I can put any numbers in here because it's not going to do anything. My slope is not going to change. It doesn't matter what the bottom number is. It matters what the top number is. So here is my line. It's a perfectly flat line. Hopefully that helped you with uh, creating graphs and tables from an equation. Bye. I'm gonna figure out how to stop this now.